If you have the green book, you can follow along on the daily prayer um, from pages 19 to 21. If you don't have the green book, you can download it from the Church and Wales website and follow along in that way as well. Alternatively, if you let us know your email, we can send you a copy week by week, which will include the readings also. Let us pray. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his word, to bring before him the needs of the world and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Jesus said, The first commandment is, Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is the only God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins to the Father and seek his pardon and praise. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have, not we, have we have not loved you with all our heart, and we have not loved others as Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive us. Help us to amend our lives, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. May God our Father, who by our Lord Jesus Christ has reconciled the world to himself and forgives the sins of all who truly repent, pardon and deliver us from our sins and grant us the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service continues on page 25 and 27. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let's take a moment of silent prayer to reflect on the coming of the day. Early in the morning, my prayer comes before you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Psalm 80, verses 7 to 15. Turn us again, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You made room around it. And when it had taken root, it filled the land. The hills were covered with its shadow, and the cedars of God by its boughs. It stretched out its branches to the sea, and its tendrils to the river. Why then have you broken down its wall, that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar out of the wood tears it off, and all the insects of the field devour it. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, and behold, cherish this vine, which your right hand has planted, and the branch which made you so strong for yourself. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 5, verses 1 to 7. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones, and planted it with choice vines. 
he built a watchtower in the midst of it, and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice but saw bloodshed, righteousness but heard a cry. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the Gospel Canticle. You'll find this on page 29 of the Daily Prayer. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David, through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of their sins, and the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 21, verses 33 to 46. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priest and the elders of the people, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his servants, his slaves, to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death, and lease the vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce of the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parable, they realised that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds, because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Hello. In the parable today, in Matthew, the son is killed. And, and when I read this text, my first thought is that the landowner is mad to send slaves who were then beaten and then slaves who were killed and finally to send his precious son. Why did he not send an army? Why did he not get the locals to rise up again for tenants or, or come himself in force? This would have been the answer, the answer the chief priests would have given. Send an army for the tenants to concede the land and the harvest. If they'd answered this, then they were setting themselves up to look a bit foolish. There's multiple ways to read the parables that Jesus uses in the Gospel today. We can see the vineyard as a metaphor for Israel in the way that is depicted in Isaiah, where the land is Israel and the people are the vine. We can imagine the temple leaders as the evil tenants who were defrauding God of the fruit of his vine and the fruit of the covenant with Israel because they're not leading the people correctly. They're not upholding the true law. Or we can see ourselves as the Christian body who will take over from the old order that the Israelites in the production of the good vine and therefore the good wine. As Christians, we would then be the ones to, to gain the salvation because we are the ones who have believed. This is a puzzle of a parable. How are we to read it? When Jesus jumps to talking about himself as the cornerstone then, I get a clearer idea of why he's using this parable. Jesus is delivering this lesson in the temple in Jerusalem. And it's not long now before the Pharisees will seize him. But here they are instead challenging him. They want to know his teachings, but not because they want to learn from him. Instead, they want to disprove him and find his answers in something that is wrong. The chief priests would have seen themselves in this parable as the rich landowner. They might well have been so anyway. They may have owned land. And they'd always be wary of the on the lookout for unscrupulous tenants. It's their nature, therefore, to be wary. They are uncomfortable thinking anything different. In the way that they're comfortable in their lives, they don't want any changes to happen. Jesus, meanwhile, has been preparing people. He's prepared disciples about what will happen in Jerusalem. And here he is preparing the chiefs and leaders to their mistake. He's not giving up with them. He continues to teach, to warn and to work the ground, so to speak. He continues to give everyone every opportunity to understand that he is the Messiah. He is preparing the way in everyone's mind and hearts so that those who listen and understand can believe. And those who listen but can only hear the words as a confirmation of what they already believe to be true know that there are consequences to this. Over the last five weeks, we have spoken often about creation and have looked at how the teachings and scripture from the Bible have tried to show us how the world and we are in a relationship to each other that was intended for us to work in partnership and so that humans both lived off and looked after animals and plants, the fish in the sea and the water we drink, the air we breathe. We've spoken often about how some of the lifestyles that we've slipped into, perhaps without even noticing, have been giving us unexpected results, let's say. How, for example, the development of the oil industry has allowed to save lives many, many times. It's kept food fresher, it's transported it quicker, it's also left us with some problems with plastic that we can't recycle or manage and, and with pollution in our air and seas. We know that the biochemical industry has created chemicals that keep us clean, how prominent that is at the moment to us. And it can mean the chances therefore of us dying from small or minor cuts, and I'm getting them all the time, um, they're vastly reduced. The access to antiseptic change the world really but we also know that the byproducts of these chemicals have washed into rivers and onto farmland and it's going to stay there 
not that it's going to remove it. It might seem sometimes to the manufacturers and inventors that as quickly as they learn how to produce something, that they discover that they've made another problem which will need fixing later on. Look at communications. Our ability to send signals around the world has changed so many lives, has freed people from making long journeys and has stopped people from being isolated. Our schools and colleges have been returning and it's a difficult start to term. Let's face it, it's not been an easy year. We have been learning how to teach and how to be students in a very different time, all of us, including myself. The environment that we used to be has changed totally. But the teaching itself and the message that students will be taught will remain the same. Students will learn chemistry and math and languages and music and every student will learn more and know more than their teachers and parents before the end of their days. We have a desire to learn. It's one of the things that makes us human, but not always the same things as each other. Everyone will bring to the world a different skill. But the desire to learn for the next generation will be many marvellous things. Someone will learn how to produce truly clean energy. Someone will discover how to ne negotiate with world leaders and assure that everyone has food. And, and someone will learn a way to prevent illnesses like COVID-19 from spreading around the world. In all of these things, God will have had a hand. And in the choices we make, if we keep our eyes fixed on the cross, we will have a better chance of fixing the problems of the world. The rejected cornerstone came to tell us that we will find love and a welcome when we treat each other with love, fairness and truth. And sometimes we will be challenged by this. We'll have to choose between quick fixes and more sustainable approaches. We'll have to listen to what nature is telling us and, and not expect animals to be our slaves or for the people producing our food to be slaves. We'll have to share out the land, spread out the harvest and share what we've been given. Let's face it, it's not like this message is a secret. God's only son came to tell us in person. And 2000 years later, we still remember in anguish that he wasn't listened to. But we're listening and we can hear his voice traveling down through time and it's time it comes with a harsh warning to us. The one who falls on this stone will be broken in pieces. What if we can see the stone, we know it's there, we believe it's there, and still take no notice of it? Well, perhaps we should expect to fall. Amen. Psalm 100 O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. You serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Let us pray. Let us pray to the Father of the Church and the world. O Lord God, and direct your Church in the way of truth, unity and praise. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray especially for Bishop Joanna, and our LMA Dean, and all who minister in our LMA. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deepen our awareness of the unity of the human family. Grant that we and all people may live together in justice, peace and mutual trust, no matter what their race or culture, background or circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Cleanse the prejudice and selfishness from our hearts and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us 
to use your creation to your greater glory, that all may share the good things you provide. Forgive us for despoiling our world, for failing to appreciate it as we should. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us to love one another and unite us in the service of your kingdom and each other. We pray for children and young people and for who are new in the faith. In particular, Lord, the young college students returning back to their digs and to their halls of residence. Direct and guide them in the way that leads to you and help us to be welcoming to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy and skill for the healing of those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. Support all who strive to bring relief from coronavirus. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers today. Especially we pray for Elvin and his family. For Marine and for Tommy and Rosemary. For Jean and Bert. Arwen and Annette. William and Rosemary and Will and Gwynville. May the Lord be with all of them, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful end and eternal joy to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. We pray for Maya Reynolds and David James and their families. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. The things, good Lord, that we pray for, give us the grace to labour for. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And we hold in our hearts the Diocese of Roam and LMA. Please pray for the LMA Dean, Canon Susie Bay, Reverend Adrian Teal, Reverend Lynn Reese, Reverend Dr. Caroline Jones, Reverend Nicholas Barakou, and all who offer ministry in this LMA. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pay for the Anglican Church of Tanzania and the Most Reverend Dr. Mayembo Mandadawa, Archbishop of Tanzania and Bishop of Tangu Bakuga, the Right Reverend Bati Bali Basani, Bishop Diocese of Bakuga. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who reigns with you, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us in the language of your old trust. I'm Tad, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Today's Collect Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless, till they find their rest in you. Teach us to offer ourselves to your service, that here we may have your peace, and the world to come may see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The second collect for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the third collect for grace. O Lord and Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this new day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we may be kept free from all sin and safe from every danger and enable us in everything to do only what is right in your eyes through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen
you for joining me this morning. Don't forget there's also a service at 12 o'clock on Zoom. And then on Tuesday, Can and Anne will be doing a live on Facebook at 11. And then this Friday, we've also got Cafe Church, which is again is a Zoom service. So you do get in contact with us if you'd like to join in. It's all very informal and good fun. Hope to see you soon. Go in peace.